Okay, let's start the uh, the topic rules and regulations. See, this is something which you are very familiar with. You have come across this. You have come across this. But can you define what's a rule and can you define what's a regulation? Can you at least differentiate between them? Please take the initiative answer. Take the initiative and answer. If I tell you this, I'm not getting any answer, but see. There is a these two are almost very synonymical. That means they are very much related and having very similar meaning, but in different context. If I tell what is a rule, rule can be taken in a narrow sense. Like, you know, in your home, your father makes certain rules, right? Like when you should get up, when you should go to bed for sleep, when you, when you should be like, you know, uh, these two, see, these are the two main important things what parents can set rules in the home or house, and then certain discipline and certain rules related to cleanliness. Your mother said certain rules related to cleanliness, right? So, if I say about rules, rules, or in you stay in a society or in an apartment, or in your, you go to a college, or you go to a school, or you go to any place, there are certain rules you always come across. So, what does that mean? Rules are set by or or made by individuals right your father makes at home your mom makes your teacher makes your principal your hod makes in the college or school right or in a company you're going to work in the future they make certain rules so rules are usually set by individuals or organizations and apply within a specific context. That means rules are made for some specific things, okay? But what about regulations? Regulation is also set of rules, but they are set by governmental bodies. They are made by governmental bodies and has a wider acceptability or regulations are also legally binding unlike rules. If you don't follow rules, just your father will punish you by giving you some extra bit of work, etc. But in the case of regulation, it can become a crime. OK. So that is what is rules uh, about rules and regulations. I'll write it. Regulations are also rules. I'm not denying the fact this is a superset. Uh, I cannot say the super set or something. This is something. Uh, see, regulation are rules, I can say. OK, but these rules are made by government. Or other authority. In order to control the way something is done or the way people behave. That's it. So these have a wider applicability and acceptability and someone does and these are legally binding. I won't say these are legally binding, but you know you if you you if you want to keep yourself more disciplined and keep yourself in a system, you should be following rules, right? She don't go against the system. It is better if you uh, uh, follow uh, the rules and you are keeping yourself under some control system, right? So I will write some differences as well so that you can have a very uh, like uh, broader, uh, you know, thought process regarding this. Rules. OK, I'll just put it somewhere else. I'll see the space. Last page can have that. Rules. Regulations. 
so prescribed guidelines for conduct action or regulating principles uh, these are made i can say made by individuals these are also made by individuals, but those are the ones who represent uh, or are under the government services. OK, the lawmakers make this. Sorry, my handwriting is very bad. This is uh, like, you know, term. Can be used in general sense term can be used in legal sense That is the reason why regulatory bodies are ones are the ones whom the companies fear. Why? Because regulatory bodies regulate the sector, the companies, right? By set of rules and regulations. Just give me a second. can be adjusted accordingly rigid very rigid actually and cannot be altered or adjusted unless by the legislature and this can be fourth point can be enforced by authorities of the specific organization or social structure like society is where you stay and these are issued by the executive authorities or by the government of a country So this cannot be, you know, like these are to be enforced. These are enforced actually by the government. OK, so these are the differences. Hope you understood everything about this. Now the chapter becomes very simple and easy for you. Rules and regulations. Why is regulation required for audit? Of course, if certain regulations are made or government will make certain strong rules. Then it there are every bit then there is a then there is every bit of possibility that all the companies would follow. See if you make rules, people can take it for granted, but regulation that's government may government is making this strong set of rules because they want harmonization or they want uh, the uh, like they want certain standards to be followed. They want everyone to follow certain standards so that uh, there shouldn't be any kind of chaos or 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 there should be you know harmony uh, harmonization or like uh, rigorous follow uh, rigorous follow up of all these standards or procedures so for bringing harmonization of audit auditing procedures that means company x company y company z they all are regulated by the government that means rules are made for all these companies uh, uh, by the government and it is common for all of them because it's made by the government but x, x company can have their own set of rules 
which only x can follow why shouldn't why there is no need for y to follow and no need for z to follow but if government makes every company has to follow to ensure audit quality of course because uh, there is a regulation so government will set certain guidelines and ask the companies to uh, maintain the quality of the audit uh, like uh, procedure or activity and also the government wants strict ethical code of conduct to be adhered uh, strict code uh, ethical code of conduct is adhered to that means followed okay now regulatory guidance for practitioners who are practitioners the chartered accountants who are running audit firms give me a second please So regulatory guidance for practitioners, the chartered accountants who 
are running practicing firms for them what are the guidelines as given by the government so practitioners have to always follow three things the national corporate law that means the country in which they practice the company's law of that country or nation in india we have indian companies act 2013 and in uk they have national corporate law companies act 2006 in the uk and the sarbans oxley act in the united states and then they have to follow all the audit standards isas that is international standards on auditing right and then code of ethics as well this is very important very very important to be uh, always remembered okay next point rules and regulations regulations related to audit who must get an audit done first of all the government has government has decided something you know they have decided who are supposed to get themselves audited as per the government so small or owner managed companies are usually exempt why because the shareholders uh, are the owners themselves uh and not someone out from like not outsiders in the sense uh like uh, what i mean to say here okay what i mean to say here in owner in small or owner managed companies the point here is in small or owner managed companies there are no outside investors they are the ones who are investing in the company they uh, are the ones who are going to enjoy the profits they are the ones who are going to bear the losses they the, the it's not like the people have invested money in them by taking stock holding or ownership rights and here there is no need for them to disclose anything to anyone they can keep their business secrets with themselves or their documents with themselves but in company form of organization it's not going to happen audit has to be done okay especially financial services companies or companies listed on stock exchange even if they are small companies doesn't matter the scale of operation doesn't matter but if they are listed they have to get themselves audited now regulations related to audit who can be a auditor so very clearly member of a recognized supervisory body acca in uk or icaew institute of chartered accountants of england and wales in india it is the member of icai can do audits finance audits okay so member of recognized supervisory body and and allowed by the rules that of that body to be an auditor that means these bodies they clearly say that the members of these bodies can be auditor or someone authorized by the state so a member can be an auditor in an individual capacity that means they are sole practitioners or they can have a partnership firm that means they can be associates they can have a limited liability partnership that means many many people in them or they or as a director of an audit company they can do that like you know deloitte kpmg etc if can a firm act as an auditor yes but how when if it is controlled by members of an authorized supervisory body that means someone who is a acca and running a practice firm can definitely do the audits if is directly authorized by the state that means state is accepting them as an auditor who cannot act as an auditor someone who is executed excluded sorry excluded by the law that means who is into employment or has some business or personal connections with the company if they are one if they are the related party or ones who are very much connected with the company they cannot you know do a fair audit they cannot do an audit first of all and then as per the code of ethics someone who is barred from doing an audit okay or someone uh, like who, who is not a member cannot do audits right and the the point here says particularly the cases where independence competence or confidentiality issues issues arise someone who is not independent that means you know they are having some connections with company someone has someone doesn't have skills enough skills to do an audit or someone who cannot keep the 
uh, things confidential, cannot do audits. Who appoints the auditor? Very good question. The shareholders through voting, they do that. And directors, uh, it, in, in, this is the one which is something which everyone knows, but in some, ex some cases, directors of the company even can appoint the auditor. But when? Directors can appoint the first auditor or can fill a casual vacancy. Casual vacancy is nothing but uh, when the existing auditor is not existing due to death, due to some kind of um, medical reasons or the term of the auditor has been uh, like, like, you know, the previous auditor's term has got expired. That means now uh, uh, there has to be a new auditor appointed or some fraudulent acts he has done or something that is called casual vacancy. But even then would need the members approval at a members meeting. That means they should discuss with the members, shareholders and they can do that. Then secretary of state that is a government, someone who is uh, in the government when no auditor is appointed by the that means in India registrar of companies when no auditor is appointed by the members or directors the secretary of state can do that. That means, you know, government secretaries will be there. Duration of an auditor's appointment. To what extent uh, time duration the auditor can be appointed in case of public companies whereby, you know, people's money is involved. Uh, here also people's money can be involved or it can be a family run business. Doesn't matter. Uh, auditors are appointed from one annual general meeting to the next annual general meeting. OK, in that means one AGM has happened in six months and the next AGM is due to happen in six months. Let's say, let's say, see, I'm giving a small example to, to make you understand, then they can appoint an auditor here. Uh, and in case of private companies, auditors are appointed until they are removed. Removal of an auditor. See, when can an auditor be removed by us uh, or you, you know, like there can be certain reasons for which an auditor has to be removed. So how? How that can happen by a simple majority at a AGM of the company through resignation on his own. That means simple majority people don't want this auditor to continue and then they want the auditor to, you know, uh, to be removed. So, uh, so the auditor can resign from his uh, task, whatever is performing. Are there any safeguards available to stop the removal of auditor? Yes, there are certain safeguards. What is a safeguard? A specified notice period. That means uh, maybe in some cases auditor has found guilty in some some uh, some kind of act or he or he is not performing his duty uh, with honesty or something. Then uh, there is an element of doubt that the auditor is hand in glove with the management. In those cases, uh, a notice period can be a notice is served to the auditor and some some time is given to him to hear his uh, you know like uh, case. So auditor can circulate representations clearly stating why they should not be removed. That means then auditor will explain the reasons why they should not be removed and in return they should give. So auditor has to give the resignation and writing along with the statement of circumstances to members and regulatory authority that why he has resigned. To whom? To the members and the regulatory authority. Rules and regulations. What after the removal resignation of auditor before the term of office? ACCA must be notified. Uh, immediately in such cases like why the uh, why the auditor has been removed why the member of an of a body has been removed or like you know they are, they want to remove him and the auditor's responsibilities on removal and resignation submitting a statement of circumstances at the company's registered office which relates to removal resignation dealing promptly with requests for clearance from the new auditors so they should submit why they should be why they why they sh they should not be removed they should give in writing the reasons and explain all the circumstances. OK, and deal promptly with the requests for clearance from for from the new auditors. Next point, next point. Just a second, just a second.
Now, during next point, just a second. Rights of an auditor. We should also know the rights of an auditor. What is the right of an auditor? During his term, when the auditor is in the when the, when the auditor has taken audit assignment, they have the right to access to company's books and records at any reasonable time. They can ask for that to receive information and explanation necessary for the audit. To receive notice of and attend any general meeting of members of company to be heard at such meetings. Uh, on matters of concern to the auditor, OK, uh, like any matter, anything they have concern. That means they they are skeptical about something. See, always an auditor should have a skeptical mind, you know, questioning mind. So they have certain certain things they want to know. They can uh, like uh, uh, their 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 point viewpoint should be heard at such meetings. Of any matter of concern, what what they have. And they can they have also the right to receive copies of any written resolutions of the company. That means what uh, what company has decided in the meetings and what is the resolution like majority of people are are you know like uh, majority of people want then upon resignation. To request a general meeting of company to explain the circumstances of resignation that like why the auditor has to resign. And to require the company to circulate the notice of circumstances relating to the resignation. What are the duties of an auditor? Majorly auditing the financial statements to provide an opinion on whether the financial statements give a true and fair view in all material aspects. And additionally, they may have extra reporting responsibilities required by local national law. These are the duties they have. So international regulations, what, what are the international regulations? That means international laws. There are supranational bodies which make which make this IFAC International Federation of Accountants has made certain regulations which the auditors have to follow in case of international. If they are like you know the auditing is not restricted to countries now they are, there are Deloitte and KPMG and other firms which are international firms and they are operating in various countries having uh, their operations and then like IFAC International Federation of Accountants. It is a global organization which gives international regulations for accountancy profession. That means they make rules and regulations which the accountants around the world have to follow. OK, they are they are responsible for making international regulations. The regulations include minimum requirements for accountancy class qualifications. That means what are the minimum requirements a person should have to do accounting or to become a qualified accountant? Post qualification experience that means after becoming qualified how much experience they should have and guidance on accounting and assurance for accountants around the world. That means related to all the guidances they give related to audit audit and assurance activities to the accountants around the world. IFAC has no legal standing in individual countries. That means this is a, this is an international organization, but what regulations they set for good practices in the companies and for good practices other bodies would respect and follow uh, a little bit what they say, but you know they are not legally binding in individual nations or countries. Then IASBA Code of Ethics, then IAASB International Auditing and Assurance Standard Board. They make standards. Uh, subsidiary Board of IFAC. That means they are under them. It develops and promotes the ISAs, International Standards of Audit. Thirty-seven standards have been made at present, and IS. QCs one at present and then we have international standard on quality control. That is what all that's also a body which has given one standard re regarding quality and international standards on auditing. OK. 
and then more about ISAs, the international standards for audit. ISAs are professional guidance that the auditor must follow to ensure each audit is performed consistently and to a required standard of quality. That means they should follow certain standards to do the audits. See if the if the standards are followed, there is very less chance of blunder being made. OK, so IA ISAs are not legal requirements. They are not legally binding, but they are certain standards which if followed, things would be very uh, things would be on on on, you know, on track. No deviation. Things would always be organized and without any errors because standards are followed where the auditor feels necessary to depart from an ISA to achieve the overall aim of the audit. This departure can be opted. That means if someone does not want to follow, that's OK. How are ISAs developed? That means this very good standards related to audits are developed after a lengthy process of discussion and debate and exposure drafts. So this is what everywhere it happens in democratic nations in India also. For making any uh, standard. Or law or something first a draft is made. This is given for public discussion and debates and they will see the majority of people what they accept. If many people accept this, then this will be made as a standard. So after lengthy process of discussion and debate, then it is uh, then an exposure draft is made. It is issued for public comments, which sometimes results in revisions to uh, exposure draft. That means if they want to make some changes, if they are not liking something that is welcome. And then to bring an ISA or international standard of audit into force, two thirds of IAASB members must approve the international standard for audits. OK, role of professional bodies in creation of financial finance professionals. What are the role of professional bodies? See, professional bodies play a very strong role in creating finance professionals like you students are going to be the future uh, of uh, future of this particular profession. OK. So what, what the first and foremost thing is rigorous qualification system of knowledge acquisition. That means it's not that easy that you can crack. You can become an ACCA that easily. You have to, uh, you know, uh, you have to like, you know, uh, 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 travel. OK, a long distance or the journey is of some around 13 papers. OK, so that after all those papers clear, then you can really one day confidently say that you are an expert in this field. Support of support to members to demonstrate high professional and ethical values, technical support to governments on accounting and business matters. That's what they do. Once a person becomes a member, he she must demonstrate continuing professional development. That means you should not stop studying wide. You should always be again looking forward to uh, gain, to you know work hard and gain more and more knowledge. OK, and update your skills. Make yourself up to date as per the market conditions. And members are also suppo supposed to comply with code of ethics at all times. That is most important. You become a professional, but you should be very you should be morally, you know, like uh, uh, very, uh, you know, someone who 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 has good ethical values and morality, honesty, failing which disciplinary action can be taken against the member. This is the end of the chapter. I wanted to go through this video and follow this P, uh, this particular uh, PDF. I will send you this PDF right now on Skype. Please follow or I'll WhatsApp you and then we'll meet tomorrow for the new chapter. OK, thank you so much all of you.